Genotype 1 is the most common genotype in the U.S. 70 to 75 percent of hep C patients in the U.S. have genotype 1. Of them, the majority are genotype 1A. A quarter will be genotype 1B. Outside the U.S., particularly in Europe, genotypes 2 and 3, which comprise most of the remainder in the U.S., are more common. Currently, for genotype 1, we have three excellent FDA-approved all-oral interferon-free options. They differ in their regimens for 1A and 1B for some, but not all. For cefospivir and semeprevir, there is no difference in the treatment of genotype 1A and 1B, but treatment does differ in duration based on the presence or absence of cirrhosis. For cefospivir lidiposvir, the treatment also doesn't vary based on whether they are 1A or 1B, but once again, longer treatment duration is recommended for cirrhotic patients, particularly those that are treatment experienced, and shorter duration can be used for treatment naive, non cirrhotic patients who have low viral loads. For the regimen of paratapravir, ambitosphere, and disabuvir, that regimen does vary based on whether they are 1A or 1B. 1B patients are treated without ribavirin. 1A patients are treated with ribavirin. And the presence of cirrhosis affects the duration in 1A patients, but not 1B patients. Obviously, the choice of the regimen may vary based on clinician preference, patient preference, most commonly insurance company preference, and often on factors like the subtype, the presence of renal dysfunction, which may affect the choice of regimens, or concomitant medications that may either preclude one or the other regimens or require so much adjustment that the clinician feels better choosing another. The important thing to remember is all three of these regimens are highly effective, offering SVR rates over 90%, certainly over 95% in most patient subgroups. All are very well tolerated with 99% compliance in their clinical trials. And so what I tell my patients is the best regimen is the one we can get our hands on from the insurance company because compared to where we were, the efficacy, the safety, the tolerability of these three regimens has been such a quantum change from where we were with interferon that rather than bicker over which we should have, we should be fighting towards improved access to these medications and getting the largest number of patients effectively treated. Our treatment regimens do have to be tailored to the presence or absence of cirrhosis. For some regimens, like cefospivir semeprevir and cefospivir lidiposvir, that involves changing the duration. For the 3D regimen of paratapravir, ambitosphere, and disabuvir, it means either adding ribavirin and keeping to 12 weeks for the 1B patients, or considering extending the duration to 24 weeks for the 1A patients. So you have to, it depends on which regimen you choose. For patients who were previously treated, we have to assess what that previous treatment was and make future treatment decisions. For patients who failed pegylated interferon and ribavirin, all three of the FDA-approved regimens are effective and are FDA-approved for retreatment. For patients who failed a first-generation protease, telapavir and bosepavir, 
in combination with pegylate interferon and ribavirin. The only approved regimen is sofosbuvir lidiposphere at the current time. There is data for the other regimens, but at the current time, they're not FDA approved. For patients who failed an all oral regimen, currently, we have no FDA approved regimens and very limited data. There is now resistance testing that is available for the protease inhibitor, which would be semeprevir, telapavir, bosepavir, and paratapavir, and for the NS5A, umbinosphere and lidiposphere. So I have in my patients who fail an oral regimen, I try to get that resistance testing for the drugs that they are on right at the end of the therapy because I do believe it will inform future treatment options. But currently we have four drug classes approved and so one hopes that as we get more data on mixing and matching these regimens and more three and four drug regimens, we will be able to salvage all patients who fail current therapy. However, because we don't have data, that makes it so critically important that we choose our patients correctly and that we look for any potential drug-drug interactions that may make treatment fail and that we ensure compliance for all of our patients.